Superfood Evolution presents Agave. Is it a healthy sweetener? Is it comparable to high fructose corn syrup? Agave syrup, also referred to as agave nectar, is the processed sap or juice commercially extracted when ripe from the core of the plant piña. Today, most agave sweeteners are primarily produced from the same blue agave tequiliana species used to make the popular distilled alcoholic beverage known as tequila. Native to arid desert regions of Mexico and the southwestern U.S., the genus agave now consists of over 200 species that can be grown in a variety of climate zones. They are succulents composed of a large rosette of fleshy, thick, sharp pointed leaves with a center stalk that often takes many years to blossom. Though agave is frequently believed to be a type of cactus, it is not related to cacti nor the aloe vera species. Agave is more closely related to the yucca plant. Several species like agave americana are commonly used in ornamental horticulture as a landscape plant in rural desert type climates. Before we discuss agave's commercial production and its controversial use and marketing as a natural sweetener, we will briefly touch upon some of the more traditional uses of the wild agave species. Traditional Indigenous Use of the Agave Plant We find it quite fascinating how natural plants were first utilized by native peoples and agave is one of those species that has an interesting history as a valued food source often equated with the oak acorn, pinon pine, mesquite, and desert fan palm. Wild agave, like agave deserti, once served as a food and material resource for specific American Indian populations, who considered all parts of the plant edible, including the flowers, the leaves, the flower stalk, as well as the basal rosette, or yamal. Among desert-oriented groups, like the Quahila peoples native to inland regions of Southern California, agave, or a mule, was prepared by roasting it for several days in an earth pit oven to impart a sweet molasses-type flavor. Once roasted, agave core, stalks, and leaves were then usually pounded into cakes, sun-dried, and stored for later use. According to the book Tamalpak, Quahila Indian Knowledge and Usage of Plants, the roasting pit was about three feet deep and five feet wide and done with a specific layering of rocks and hot coals. All parts of the agave were placed in the pit and covered with leaves and grasses, then left to roast for three nights. This was a highly revered ritualistic process that was traditionally only done by Quahila men and according to the authors, men were judged on their ability to roast agave and were taught the skill at a young age. The strong fiber of the agave plant, often equated with hemp plant fiber, was used extensively to make many other items, including rope, bowstrings, baskets, and sandals. The agave leaf and pointy tip was used as a natural type of needle and thread for sewing. Interestingly, the hard thorn at the end of the leaf, when carefully detached, produced several feet of fiber that remained attached to the needle-like thorn. Likewise in Mexico, the agave plant also referred to as maguey, has been historically utilized as a sugar and material resource by many ancient Mesoamerican cultures. The sap, or aguamil, is used to make the traditional drink known as poke, or agave wine, as well as the distilled alcoholic beverage called mezcal. Aguamil sap from the flower stalk was also utilized by indigenous peoples of Mexico to make a type of condensed syrup called miel de maguey or miel de agave. Agave and its modern-day use as an alternative sweetener. The commercial production and use of the agave plant as an alternative sweetener is actually a fairly recent phenomenon that has come a long way since its more traditional preparation methods. First introduced to the U.S. health food market in 1995 via the Natural Products Expo West trade show, it was largely promoted as a low-glycemic, natural, raw sweetener. Advertised under the label agave nectar or blue agave syrup, it became a popular sugar substitute used in so-called healthy brands of ice cream, salad dressing, ketchup, and protein bars. By the early 2000s, it was a widely used syrup 
commonly found in local co-ops as well as large chain health food stores. Especially popular among vegetarians, vegans, and those following a raw vegan diet, it became a frequently utilized ingredient in desserts or as a sugar replacement. For a while, everyone loved agave. That is until about 2009, when it was essentially exiled as a nutritious natural syrup and conversely deemed an extremely processed, high fructose sugar equated with that of high fructose corn syrup. The Big Agave Controversy in a Nutshell The Big Agave Controversy essentially began in April of 2009, when Rami Nagel, author of Cure Tooth Decay, Heal and Prevent Cavities with Nutrition, released an article entitled Agave, Nectar of the Gods, chiefly criticizing its high fructose content. The information he provided was a sugar profile report analyzing the two main commercial agave sources, Nikutli from Madava and Idea from Wholesome Sweeteners, as well as raw honey and maple syrup. Agave was presented to contain between 70 to 85% fructose, twice as much as raw honey and a considerable amount more than maple syrup. In the article, he made some good points about the processing techniques used and condemned the mislabeling made by these two leading agave manufacturers at that time. He essentially accused them of false advertising and making it appear as if agave was simply the extracted, unprocessed nectar straight from the agave plant, rather than a refined, high fructose variety. A month later, both Sally Fallon and Rami Nagel co-wrote an article entitled Agave Nectar Worse Than We Thought, in which they compared agave syrup to high fructose corn syrup. One of their main points was the concept that agave was a marketing ploy intentionally introduced by corporate blue agave monopolies in an underhanded way to replace high fructose corn syrup, a sugar with a growing reputation as an unhealthy sweetener. In July of 2009, Dr. Joseph Mercola published his first article on agave entitled, Agave, a Triumph of Marketing Over Truth, largely criticizing its high fructose content. This subsequently made a huge impact on the holistic health community and his large, health-conscious fan base. In short, a once favorite sweetener consumed in many vegetarian, vegan, and raw vegan circles was slowly discredited in the months and years to follow. The information in this video is what we have found in our own personal research on agave sweetener, so you can make the best choices for your particular health objectives. But first off, let's ask the big question. Is agave comparable to high fructose corn syrup? Different from high fructose corn syrup, which is made from milled corn starch, usually derived from GMO corn, and a process that converts its starch sugars into fructose, there is no starch in the agave species. Rather, the agave plant is composed of substances referred to as inulins, a class of polysaccharides and dietary fibers often found in roots and rhizomes of certain species as a way to store energy. According to Wikipedia, most plants that synthesize and store inulin do not store other forms of carbohydrate such as starch. Agave sweetener is technically classified as a hydrolyzed inulin syrup for this reason. What is the main source of sweetness found in blue agave? The inulin in agave tequiliana contains the class of oligosaccharide fructans known as fructooligosaccharides or FOS, which are polymers of the fructose molecule. Ultimately, after blue agave sap is filtered, heated, or enzyme treated, it does in fact make most agave sweeteners a concentrated source of fructose that is definitely comparable to high fructose corn syrup. Most high fructose corn syrup is about 55% fructose, but grades can vary between 42 to 90% total fructose, depending on its commercial use in processed foods and soft drinks. Currently, the top two original health food brands of commercial blue agave syrup in the US are Madava and Wholesome Sweeteners, both of which, according to our research, contain between 75 and 85% fructose content. On the Wholesome Sweeteners website, it states that Wholesome Fair Trade Organic Blue Agave is made up of 75% fructose, 20% dextrose, glucose, and the balance is inulin, dietary fiber, and mannitol. Based on 2018 email communications with the company Madava, 
they state that their current specifications of fructose level usually test between 80 and 85 percent. Are all agave sweeteners created equal? There is no disputing the fact that agave syrup is predominantly composed of fructose as the main source of sugar. And if you are someone who is not into consuming concentrated amounts of fructose because of its health implications, you might want to consider other options as far as condensed natural sweeteners go. A fructose consumption is linked with increasing blood triglycerides as well as body fat. Overconsumption can likewise put stress on the liver, where it is metabolized, and can cause absorption issues such as gas and bloating. While yes, we would say it's true that most agave manufacturers around the world are producing a very high fructose agave product, some over the years are advertising that their low temperature processing actually creates a decreased fructose percentage. According to our research, nutrition data does in fact indicate that there is some truth to this theory. Raw agave, as opposed to cooked, is shown to have much less fructose and a greater balance of other sugar ratios. The company Global Goods Volcanic Agave claims this reduces their total fructose content to 47.6%. Although the percentage of fructose in volcanic agave is still quite high, it may be slightly better than other selections commonly found in health food stores. By visual comparison, we notice that the volcanic variety is much thicker than other brands we tested. Keep in mind that products labeled raw can be very misleading. Currently, there are no legal requirements for what constitutes a raw product. In effect, the term raw can be used freely without adhering to low temperature processing. Some brands may therefore use it as a marketing device, while others may be genuinely producing a low heat, under 118 degrees Fahrenheit treated sweetener. In other words, it is really up to the integrity of the company you purchase your agave from. The color differences between agave sweeteners comes from the filtration process, not the amount of time or temperature it is heated. This determines the final color and flavor. Darker agave is less filtered with a richer flavor, whereas light agave is more filtered, which gives it a neutral taste. The major problem with most agave nectars is that they are sourced from the blue agave Tequiliana Weber species, cultivated specifically by the tequila industry for its very high fructose yield. Other types of agave, sometimes generically referred to as maguey, are not found to contain such high fructose levels when processed. For example, the agave salmiana species is identified to contain much more sucrose content compared to the A. tequiliana species. This variety is now being utilized as an alternative to commercial agave nectars derived from the blue agave variety. Several companies are now producing a raw organic product called Magwe Sap in which they claim has very low fructose percentages. Our views on agave use. Used in small amounts, concentrated natural sweeteners can be a flavorful way to enjoy certain foods and drinks. Although they are not required for health, they can satisfy a sweet tooth in a world filled with far more harmful and tempting options. When it comes to agave, we would personally recommend avoiding it altogether or limiting its use, especially as a primary sweetener. Keep in mind that it's not what you eat some of the time, it's what you eat on a regular basis that has the most significant impact on long-term health. As far as the list of healthier condensed sweeteners goes, there are plenty of other options to consider, such as coconut nectar, yacon root syrup, raw honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, monk fruit, and stevia. Precautions. Agave syrup should be avoided in cases of candida overgrowth, IBS, or leaky gut. Excessive intake may cause bloating and flatulence. It is best to consult your healthcare provider when using agave on a regular basis if you have type 1 or 2 diabetes, are pregnant, nursing, or have a serious medical condition. Thanks for watching. For top sources as well as additional information on agave, be sure and check the links in the description box below this video. Support us with a thumbs up if you found it useful. And be sure and check out these other informational videos.